Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for being here. We're going to continue this beautiful mimer about the inner dimension of what Rosh Hashanah really is. You know, so there's different ways to experience a holiday and knowing what it's about and what goes on spiritually on this day is very helpful. A, a brief introduction. The general idea that when a person does something wrong, he brings about some kind of damage. Or let's say if a person did a, committed a sin, he was bad to somebody, he was mean, he was hurtful, he ate something non-kosher, it's causing a, a stain on their soul. And no one's perfect, present company excluded, and um, you make a mistake, you got to clean up the mistake. You got dirt onto your clothing, you'll clean it up, it's not the end of the world. Now, depending what you did, depending how strong the dirt is, that's how the, the cleaning process will be. But that's what Shuva really is. Shuva says, I acquired some kind of stain, some kind of blemish, dirt, something on my soul, and I got to clean it up. And the process of cleaning up is regretting the past, confessing to Hashem, we don't confess to humans, resolving not to do it again. There's the spirituality and the holiness of the day of Yom Kippur, or in general, the 10 days of Shuva, which help us get there. And literally, you could erase impact of the past. Great opportunity. The question, however, is what happens when you miss a positive mitzvah? There's no blemish. I didn't do anything wrong. Tefillin on August 29th, yesterday, is a, a necessary mitzvah, of course, and it brings something into the world, into you, into your neshama, some kind of, let's call it, flow of divine energy as a result of that mitzvah, any mitzvah. I don't know, I, I didn't attend from it, or been in times this year. Really? I had no idea. I just saw that. Yeah. So when you do something, well, i got to switch examples then. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you do something positive, you bring onto your neshama something positive. If you missed matzah last year, you could eat matzah this year. A thousand times, in the most expensive matzah, whatever else you want, it's not going to make up for whatever you tried to achieve last year, because last year is last year. It, now it's this year. Shabbos candles, right? Last Friday night, if they didn't do it, they're going to do it this week. They're never going to miss again. And they, they regret that they missed it, and they, it was really whatever. You didn't acquire what Shabbos candles, matzah, film, whatever that mitzvah is, the positive mitzvah gives you. So if it's about punishment, fine, you did shuva, and Hashem says, okay, I'm not going to punish you, because you, you're never going to do it again. You, you sincerely regret the fact that you said, hey, I'm not in the mood. Not that you do that, but etc. But whatever you're supposed to bring down to you, you're not, it's not here. Okay, so regarding a negative commandment, I get it. It's a stain, you clean the stain. Regarding a positive commandment, you're missing some kind of flow. Yesterday is gone. Today is great. And you'll probably maximize and do better today than yesterday because of what happened. And it'll never happen again. But you're still missing it. So how do you fix that? By understanding that, will understand, morning, the dynamic power of tshuva and the opportunity that it has and how it's so um, useful in our uh, service of Hashem and in general looking at, at life of, of what tshuva is really about. Let's see it inside. Somebody who makes a blemish, meaning he's lacking in teira mitzvahs, heim v'sur meira v'heim v'vasei toiv, Till now we're discussing a person who his attitude, his accepting yoke of heaven, Kabbalah soul, is not the way it's supposed to be. And crowning Hashem as king on Rosh Hashanah means I'm taking you as my king. I'm in. In the past, maybe sometimes it wasn't with Ava Uberatzin, as he said, it wasn't so loving, it wasn't so desirable. I had no choice, so I showed up. But it wasn't really like, oh yes, I want to serve you, Hashem. And that's a problem. And Rosh Hashanah, we want to commit to being more devoted and like there's no way out and I'm fully there and even doing it with a love and a desire. But we weren't talking about someone that's messing up. Now we're saying, what about somebody who blemished? I mean, someone who, who made a mistake and who, we're talking on purpose. We didn't do something in Torah Mitzvahs. Whether it's about transgressing one of the prohibitions or he missed a positive mitzvah. This is Aramaic. Each one according to what he knows in his soul. Meaning every person according to their level um, 
what they may have missed or transgressed. He can't bring forth this supernal desire which we keep talking about, which comes on Rosh Hashanah. It's Hashem's want to create a world, which is the flow of the new life source for the coming year. He's lacking in certain areas. How is he going to bring this down? This is the great advantage of Rosh Hashanah and general 10 days of Tshuva. In them and through them you'll bring forth the Ratzin, the Divine Will. Normally there is a typical, a standard process. You have to do certain things, the Ratzin comes down. What if I missed it? Well, thankfully we have a Saras Meit Tshuva. Saras Meit Tshuva, it's some kind of access, not a shortcut, but it's direct. And you could get things in a way, you could bring forth this desire of Hashem in a way that's not uh, typical or easily accessible the rest of the year. So we're looking at it not about reward, punishment, uh, what happens if I don't. We're trying to connect to Hashem and bring forth His Ratzin. And if I'm, not in, if I'm not there, I wasn't all there, how am I going to do this? Well, we have these 10 days. And to understand this, this is what I started with. In order to understand this, we need to understand how does tshuva have the power to fix, to correct a void, a lack, by missing a positive mitzvah. If I ate non-kosher, God forbid, and there's a stain, I'll do tshuva, Hashem will wipe off that stain from my soul. But if I missed matzah, or lulav and esrig, there's no stain, I'm, I'm missing something, is, there's like a piece that's not filled. There's a divine energy that's not there. How do I, how do I make that up? You uh, make a shrug jelly and put it on the matzah. <laughs> that's good. Before you throw it, right? Mm. After throwing, because it's matzah. That's right. Kihine, what's the question? The mitzvahs leisa say by a negative transgression, sheim of avera achas that if he transgressed one avera, kanale kateger achas he acquired for himself one prosecutor, so to speak. In other words, there's a negative energy or negative components, it's called dirt or stain, on his neshama. As we learned in Pirkei Aves, so when a person does something wrong, he now acquired a prosecution, a prosecutor, or sometimes they say it's an, a negative angel, about this person. Because negativity attracts negativity. When he's going to return to Hashem, and Hashem will have Rachmanes, because that's what Hashem does, he has compassion. You're awakening, evoking, provoking. Great compassion above. And compassion of Hashem, meaning supernal compassion, is referred to as pure waters. And water cleans. So I do tshuva, Hashem has rachmanis, equals water, pure water. And then, as the Pasuk says, I'll sprinkle water uh, upon you, and you'll be purified. Okay, so my neshama has some issues, but I do tshuva, I evoke Hashem's Rachmanes, and it rains. Spiritual waters, again, this is all spiritual, but it gets it cleaned up. There's also a Pasuk that says, if Hashem will, wa- will wash off the dirt, and so on. Through this we say, we say in davening, in Slichas, we say this in Tachman, erase and take away our sins. Through this, through the process of Tshuva, Hashem erases, He deletes, and takes away the sin and the prosecution. Again, this is all by a negative um, trans- transgression. Okay. Until now we spoke about water. There's also a, a, a saying that the evil completely um, eradicate or, or destroy in smoke. It means fire. Okay, so you wash it away, or the whole bad gets consumed and burnt up. It just goes up with the smoke. You'll take away. As the Pasuk says, and the spirit of impurity I'm going to move away. You have all these references that if something is bad, which came as a result of a negative action, perhaps even even negative words or, or thought, but I did something wrong, and as a result I have some negativity, Hashem will take it away. Through a process, it's not always easy, 
But there's a, a technical mechanism to this. Do tshuva, and Hashem will remove the impurity, or remove the evil, or remove the whatever it is, the punishment. There's nothing that could stand in the way. Is there a difference between the means it's removed? Is it water, or is it, is it a fire? I never thought of that. I'm, I'm the, problem, the answer is yes. I don't know what it is, though. Because um, whenever he brings it, he usually brings both of them together. So, let me rephrase that. Often, they come together, water and the, the, the removal of and the smoke and so on. But, so, so you're, you should burn a fire. It sounds a lot like Ganem. Mm. Well, this is not Ganem. This is taking away a virus. <laughs> <laughs> More like a mikvah. In carrying of impurities. It's pretty hot one. Hot one. <laughs> you saying something? Oh, I was just going to say that uh, he, he's saying that the, like, we should, I should go burn a fire at the prosecutor's office and then that way the... Yeah, I don't recommend it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this all makes sense for negative mitzvahs. I caused the stain, I'm going to clean it. Avo mitzvahs ase, but when it comes to positive mitzvahs, shame am shoches even the malko, which they are bringing forth the limbs of the king, there are 248 positive mitzvahs, which correspond to 248 limbs of a person. Every mitzvah is another limb. You're bringing into your world, into the general world, into your own personal life, spirituality, right? Godliness, holiness, divine. They bring the king here. And because he messed up and he caused a lack of that flow, with what and how is this is going to be fixed through tshuva. Today is Wednesday. On Tuesday, he didn't put on tefillin. He could put on tefillin twice on Wednesday. It's not going to fix Tuesday's, whatever tefillin brings forth. It's not going to be there anymore. And again, it's not about punishment. There's no punishment. He, he did tshuva. It's all fine. You know, there's no blemish you're trying to fix here. You're trying to, to fill a void which wasn't there. And the only way to get it is matzah has to be on the 15th of Nisan. Not, or, or Pesach Sheni if you missed but he's not going to make up for it by eating matzah today that there should be the, the completion of their flow and filling their lack how do you do it? so to understand this we have to delve deeper there's something that David Melech says until him that I call out to you from my depths He's going to explain that there's two levels of depths. There's basic, and then there's really deep. I call out to you from the depths. Now we say this in Shira Amalis, and during the whole Asaris of Truva, we add this Shira Amalis before Baruch Or after Yishtabach, um, same thing. Um, 